so much. Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Somna Sambu, and of course, we've been taking a look at uh, what's going on with the social investment programs in Nigeria, and of course, uh, manufacturers leaving the country. And I have with me in the studio Arise analyst Dr. Constance Ikoku to provide more insight on the issues raised. Thank you so much, Dr. Constance, for joining us. And then you would have seen, I mean, those two sites. I mean, we had a guest who was a former national investment uh, uh, program coordinator, focal person, and then, of course, someone who is an academic, actually talk about uh, the controversy we have with the Social Investment Program and the Humanitarian Ministry. And uh, what's been your overview of all their submissions? So I think the starting point is to say that um, these egregious reports point to a deep systematic failure and the reliction of financial responsibility by everyone involved, including the government. It does not look good at all on the President Bola Tinubu administration uh, and his team. And uh, at the same time, I think that it presents a brilliant opportunity for the government to conduct um, a thorough cleansing uh, of all the ministries, parastatas and agencies. It's not enough to focus on the humanitarian affairs uh, ministry because every one of them, they probably have problems and they should come under fire. I think if he does that, he will win a lot of hearts and minds. The question is, does he have the credibility to go the whole hog? Because that will be stepping on many toes and a lot of heads will roll. Um, but it's important for Nigeria that he does it. You know, it will be uh, an issue of, is it going to be politically expedient for you? Even if it's not, it's good for the country, so go ahead and do it. That's number one. Then number two, specifically for the minister, Edu, I think that there are two things. It's either she was aware of the rules, financial processes, and decided to flout it because other people were doing it and she felt or she was maybe powerful she had enough. Godfather somewhere. Or, exactly, <laughs> or it was just an innocent, honest mistake. Whatever it is, the investigations are ongoing at the EFCC, and I hope they publish the report at the end of the day. And then finally, from what I gathered, there has been a lot of infighting, backstabbing, high-wired intrigues in that ministry from the time of President Muhammad Buhari. And so she came in, and there are people fighting over turf. I gathered that she doesn't have uh, a, a good relationship with some of the top officials, including some outside the ministry who have interest yeah, in I that mean, uh, the in guests the, here actually raised the issue and said that there's a big cartel in that place because of the huge money is being sent into that ministry and so that she may have fallen victim to that cartel. I do not know about cartel, but what I'm saying is that it's obvious that if you're going to become a public official, you might require a lot of training. Yeah. And you also need emotional intelligence. Yeah, but because sorry to just interject. Yes. What kind of training would you have got, uh, like, other than the one that she got? I mean, she was a former special advisor to a governor. She was a former commissioner in government in, in Cross River State. And she was a former national woman leader of uh, uh, the APC. Not many people get those kind of experience. So, uh, at the federal level, the stakes are higher. Cross River is, you know, how many people are in Cross River? This is federal government. You're dealing with higher demons and deeper demons. The whole civil service system, you need to understand it. And you need a lot of intelligence to manage people. You're not only managing yourself, you're managing other people who have been in the civil service for a very long time. So you, even if you don't like your permanent secretary or other top officials, you have to find a way to work around them. So these are things that are important yeah, in order to be quickly, successful. Before we jump into the other issue, uh, one of the guests also said that, look, irrespective of what has happened, the National Social Investment Program should not be scrapped. President Tinubu should continue with the investigation by reform the ministry, contrary to what some people are saying that, look, the entire humanitarian ministry and the social investment program should be scrapped and domiciled in any of the older ministries? They need to have a rethink. Do they even need to remain as a ministry, that whole thing? It seems like it doesn't have a proper structure. You know, and so that's why some are saying that it, it's like a cash cow. So you need to think about it. If you had to unbundle it, unpack it, disperse it, fine. You can do little, little projects. It doesn't have to be the monster that it is that people are taking advantage of. So time during this period to think about what to actually do, not only about that ministry, the entire Nigerian ministries, parastatas, and agencies, because they all have problems. All right, just a very quick one. 15 multinationals leave Nigeria. Uh, in three years, and then, of course, over 20,000 jobs have been lost 
during this period, I mean, we hear the NECA uh, DG talking about how important it is for government to pay attention to not just international companies operating in Nigeria, but to also domestic investors, people who have factories, companies, and all over, uh, but who are asphyxiating because of government policies. He made very good points. And I think there are a number of reasons why one may be leaving or might have left. I mean, when you look uh, around the situation, the economic instability, the political uncertainty, maybe labor issues, maybe uh, the regulatory framework, and some other things. Um, every business wants to come and remain in a place where it will impact their overall visibility or feasibility. And, and profitability. You know, businesses are not charities, they are there to make money. But I also like the fact that he talked about local businesses. If multinationals are facing this kind of pain, you can imagine what local businesses, mm. small and medium enterprises are going through. In fact, those ones are even more important. They employ more people. There are multinationals that are highly skilled, and so they come with a lot of their expertise and foreign uh, nationals. Right. But when it comes to local businesses, we, we definitely need to do something about it. And I think everyone is looking up to the president um, to uh, do something different. Yeah, I, he's already started. <laughs> We've seen 2024 starting on a good note with him cutting down on the cost of governance, especially in terms of foreign trips here and there. Well, uh, that's how it's been for this edition of Arise Primetime. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Sambo.